there's a range of emotions concerning my work being reproduced, who's reproducing, how, how it's being reproduced, and so on. Perfect example, um, there are, are um, Elvis impressionists out there, young kids entering contests where their families have gotten together and, and on their own have tried to make suits, Elvis suits and so on. For the most part with that, I take it as an extreme compliment because I've seen a lot of them close up and, and the amount of ingenuity and energy they put into it and they have a goal to do this together and make it kind of wonderful and so on. Some of them don't even relate at all to a specific design of mine. Others are like little tiny loving hands at home copies of my designs. But when you see the effort and when you see, I, I take it as a compliment. You know, and, it, and it's nice that something that I did generates this kind of interest that families actually come together to produce a project, and I think that's wonderful. As far as people professionally reproducing uh, the suits, uh, offering them, you know, in sales, that kind of thing, it's a very touchy area for me. Number one, if someone is going to reproduce my work, I want it to be the best quality it can be. I want it priced as honestly as it can be. And I want it, the reputation of who's doing it to be impeccable. As far as I'm concerned, the only people who meet that criteria are Butch and Ken, uh, Polston from B&K Enterprises. That's the reason we work together because the quality, the size, what's the closest reproduction we can do, the quality of the fabric, the quality of the tailoring, it's there. It's a complimentary representation of my work and I'm very proud of everything they produce. Number one, they came and asked my permission. They wanted me involved in it. They didn't want to just, because it was my artwork and it was my impressions that they were taking and using. Other people, they have a tendency, number one, they're throwing together schlock. They're throwing together cheap, even if the jumpsuit was blank. They're throwing together rags that are not tailored properly, highly priced. If, if you're going to buy a, catalog, uh, a Mercedes, you want a Mercedes, go to Butch and Ken. You get a Mercedes, okay? But these other people are asking for the price of a Mercedes and you're getting, you know, an old Ford that's used. You know, the, the quality isn't there. They've, none of them have ever asked my permission to reproduce my artwork as themes or anything like that. I have artist rights concerning what I have produced. And it's, it's sort of like someone making a Rolex and selling it as a Rolex and not talking to Rolex about it. It's the same kind of thing. And then years down the line, again, thanks to uh, Butch and Kim and my involvement with them, I all of a sudden I'm in Graceland and I'm talking to all the people who run Graceland and I'm looking at my suits and all of these glass, you know, display cases and so on. They're asking me questions about this rhinestone, that rhinestone, and, and how did this come about, that come about. And all of a sudden it was like it, it was full circle. And um, since you know this has all started, I've been able to go to uh, been invited to different places to do speeches and and. Uh, uh, do question and answers, um, been to Australia, you know, and so on, a England, and, and it's, it's, it's been kind of fun because now it's kind of like um, a little bit of payback. People know who, who my name is, uh, where for years they never knew that I had anything to do with it to begin with. Um, and it's kind of fun, like from my sisters and, my, and the rest of my family back in New York to know that like if they ever go to Graceland, that's my stuff and it's there. And I, so it's, it's, it's been kind of a long full circle, but now it's at the point where it's, I can see the humor in all of it and I'm just enjoying it. <laughs>